Hello survivors and welcome to my FPS guide slash tutorial. In this video I will cover ways to improve your performance on Daisy standalone. I will also give information regarding FPS balance, the pros and pros and cons of choosing such various options to improve your performance because sometimes the best way to get performance will put you at a major disadvantage in the game. I will also give advice regarding hardware specifications and of the upcoming hardware sales that are coming up here in the, f in the fall. Now before I go into any major de details of every specific detail that can help you get more FPS, I like to focus on, since I haven't got your attention for the moment, I like us to send a message to the, the developers of DayZ because there's Unfortunately, only one option that the players cannot change, but it does impact FPS quite significantly, depending on the player. There is a server force setting in the game which is being forced by the server. And this setting is terrain. Terrain is the grass that surrounds the player about a 100 meter radius, due to it being set at very high. No matter what you change the setting to, nothing will happen because the server is essentially server forcing it. If the developers were to change this to at least normal or low, it would keep some, keep some of the grass, but it would lower the draw distance from instead of being 100 meters to about maybe 50, maybe 25. If the developer set it to very low, grass would be essentially eliminated, thus I'm guessing they probably would but the question is, how do I know? Well, why would this really increase FPS? You will see, I both have Fraps and MSI Afterburner indicators on the top of my screen, and I'll show you exactly how much of an F FPS increase this would really give you. But unfortunately, you cannot do this while being in a server. You can only do this in a menu. And I'll, sh and I'll show you here right in a second. And here we are at the client menu. This is a very this is all a client based scenario so the server forcing will not be affected on this part. Now let's go and configure the terrain to see what if if it was changed from very high to normal or to low and how much of an FPS impact it would really do. Go to configure video quality terrain set to very high. Currently I'm getting about 70 75 FPS. Now let's see what would happen if we change to normal. Now we're looking at 102 FPS. Let's go to low. About 5, 5, F, 5, 6 FPS increase. What if grass was eliminated altogether? 113 FPS. Now set back to very high, server standard. Back to 75, and that is exact. And, and this is the whole reason I would suggest to the Daisy developers: make the very least change to put set the option to normal. That's very significant FPS that everyone can get, and it would just benefit everyone, the whole community. Now that we got the terrain feed option out of the way, which the player can't control. Let's focus now on the options that the player can control and change to improve his or her performance. And the best place I chose to do this FPS testing is probably the worst place. And that would be the, t the town of Novo. The town of Novo is essentially the biggest town in Daisy currently. It's a place for both sniping and for close quarter combat, but the FPS here is quite horrid. So, let's start by choosing, if we can get really good FPS here, we can get good FPS everywhere else on the map. So, let's begin our tests, and begin our optimal settings. Escape, configure, and let's go to video. The overall quality, 
customize it. Set your resolution to the resolution of your monitor. Adjust gamma brightness. Usually when it comes to daisy, the daytime changes, the lighting is a bit strange, so you gotta you gotta change it quite often. V-Sync. Unless you can support 60 FPS constantly, or 120 FPS if you're on a 120 Hz monitor, monitor, keep V-Sync disabled. It will... it's honestly... it's something I would always personally use. Just have it disabled. User interface. Keep the resolution to your native resolution. Keep the size small. Aspect ratio, 16 by, by 9. These are just standard options. Nothing that will really significantly impact your performance. Textures is a sub subject that I want to talk about. When you have your, you have your MIF video memory, set it to auto. Your game, your video card will recognize the max amount of memory you can use, and you don't have to manually adjust any of this unless you're dealing with a video card that has ext an extremely small amount. But even though the game's good enough to actually recognize how much you have, and you can even notice right here that the game is using about a thousand four hundred megabytes. As I if I if I start moving around on this map, like let's say I start moving around down the hill, and I just started exploring, the usage of, of would grow and grow, and it would be capped at two thousand. So, nothing to worry about there. If you have a good graphics card, then go ahead and set your texture detail and texture filtering to very high. If you set personally, when I've changed this to very low, I did not get an FPS increase and the only thing that happened is that I got much worse quality. So, if you have a good graphics card, set it to very high. It will not impact your FPS performance at all. If you have a lower quality graphics card, then set it to low. When you set the, these options to very low, it will only use about 500 megabytes, but that's that's how it is. Quality. This is where her, all the whole FPS problem comes into play. Terrain can't be touched because this is a server-forced option. Objects is, however, the most significant FPS killer in the game, and. This, this can be changed in the configure files, which I'll be showing later. But I'll be talking about, talking about the pros and cons of how this really affects your PvP. Optimally, if you want to get the most FPS, you will set the objects to very low. And this will give you a significant FPS increase, and the game will feel pretty smooth overall. It, this option is really good for when it comes to close quarter combat. Unfortunately, this option is very, it puts you at a disadvantage when it comes to sniper gameplay. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are wondering, what do I mean? It, this is the whole reason why I have the sniper rifle here. A lot, a lot of those buildings down there have entrances and rooms that can be that people can counter snipe from. Let's say you know that there's a sniper, or you're, you're sniper hunting players on this hill because this hill is very popular with snipers. You could be in one of those rooms and because I've set my render disk my objects to very low, I can't I'm my, in my third person camera, I don't see anybody in the buildings unless I zoom in my scope to a building that has a window. Yeah, there we go. You can get easily get counter sniped and you won't even know that there's someone there unless you actually scan through your scope. Now, how can you improve this? How can you improve a sniper to see better? Well, optimally you would have to change go to your video settings and set your objects to very high. This will have a significant impact on your FPS, but you'll be able to see more openings much further out. So now I can see the inside of that building without zooming in my scope. But let's say I changed it back to very low. Now I don't.
let's see. That's honestly the biggest impact of PS. So there's two there's two play styles and two settings for different types of players. If you're a dedicated sniper, you will suffer a bit more FPS, but if you look down your scope, you'll get a significant FPS increase. And essentially that's how you're going to play. If you're very if you prefer close quarter combat, then I personally would use set objects to very low. You'll be vulnerable to snipers, but You'd be vulnerable to the snipers, but you would have a good advantage in terms of close quarter combat. Another disadvantage to setting objects at very low, you will only render players at about 500 to 600 meters. Now, what, what does that look like from this distance? From this distance, if a player was between that crack right there, that's how far I would, I would actually see a player in the world. If a player was on top of that hospital, or beyond the hospital, anywhere near this industrial sector, I would not know that they're there, just because I can't. the system does not render that far. Now, let's say you want to change the settings yourself. You can, in the CFG files. It's not really like changing, changing like a huge amount, it's more like a more precise way of changing these settings. Very low is set at 200,000 scene complexity, while very high is set at 1 million scene complexity. This system can be changed manually in the CFG files, but like I said, when it comes to being doing close quarter combat and long range combat, you would have to change, if you want for the best gameplay results, you would have to change this mid game quite often. And that's probably the best way if you want to get lo a lot of FPS. Clouds. Clouds really do not have much of a FPS impact. They're really nice if you set it to very low. It impacts your GPU a little bit. If you set the clouds to very high, it will have, it'll have a much significant impact to your GPU. And honestly, it, it just it's a, it's a visual improvement, but I've noticed some hiccups when you keep clouds at very high and you're walking around the map, so I'm guessing it's not a finished feature. So if you keep it at very low, you're gonna have clouds and it, nothing will happen. Shadows. Shadows is a interesting system. If you set to normal, you will lose about 4 or 5 FPS. You'll have some really nice cloud, nice shadows, some precise little details, but honestly, when it comes to a very PvP based game, honestly, the only thing I look for is more FPS. So honestly, just disable shadows. You'll get yourself a small FPS increase. And that kind of finishes quality. Rendering. Rendering is interesting as well. AA, you don't really need it. I mean, personally, I don't need it. The, the game has already pretty decent models that, honestly, I don't even think that anti-aliasing is really required. The models are really well done and pretty precise. Le the less your CPU has to work on, on other stuff like that, the better. Alpha to coverage, keep that disabled as well. If you want really sharp looking models and characters, set your FX AA to low, or normal. For some ver so for some reason, setting it to very high makes like a blur effect on the screen. So if you just want you just want a sharp filter, just keep FX AA on low. It will not impact FPS, but it's the per the option I personally use. HDR quality, I set that to very low. It will not impact FPS. Ambient occlusion disabled. Post process, make sure to have this disabled. It is a unnecessary feature that just really hurts your FPS. Bloom and rotation, keep this off. And that concludes the overall tutorial, even though that was quite quick. Now, I'm going to close this and focus on the details that I was talking about regarding objects and how you can change it more precisely to the, to the way you want to, because honestly, you can... You could pro if you change if you put set your scene complexity from like 
1 million to like 10 million, you can actually snipe someone in that building, see someone in that building across the map, and that's about... That is about 1,100 meters out. If you set your scene complexity at 10 million, you can get that shot, even though it will significantly hurt your FPS. But it's possible. And we'll focus on that right now. Not that, that we are at the desktop, we can do a more precise change to the CFG files in terms of objects. Because honestly, after all the changes that I've been going through, this is the most optimal way to edit. But like I said, when it comes to close range and long range combat, the best options are going to very low, which is 200,000 to very high, which is set at 1 million. To access the CFG file, press the start button, select your documents, go to the DAISY folder, and find your name, your in-game name. Select that and open it. Actually, hold on. <laughs> I'll open up with Notepad. Scroll down on Notepad all the way down, and you'll find Scene Complexity. Now I've seen a couple of other guides or sites suggesting that you c you should lower your Scene Complexity to like 50,000 or 25,000. And while yes, this will improve your FPS significantly, but there is a massive drawback. You will place yourself at a massive disadvantage in terms of PvP. And upcoming here in a second is a test I did in Cherno, where the scene complexity was set at 200,000, and I had a friend with a sniper rifle inside a cafe building only 100 meters from me. And since the scene complexity was set at 200,000, I wasn't even rendering the inside of a building, even though it was very close to it. And this was the result. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> see, see, the thing is, let's see, that, there's a good thing there's a railing up here. <laughs> so basically what's going to happen, I'm going to put it to very low. Right now I'm going to see you. You're right there on that dot. Now I'm going to have you shoot this in about a couple seconds here. I'm going to put the very low so you become invisible on my screen so I don't even see you. Am I really invisible? Is it because of the window? You, you'll be completely gone. Okay. Yeah, you are... Yeah, in third person, you're completely invisible to me. Okay, take Shoot a shot, the shot, the helmet. take the shot at the helmet. Yep. Take another shot at it. Oh, one second, I'm frozen. Okay. There you go. One more shot. I think my bullet's just going through it. I was hitting the at railing before, or the thing below it. That's fine. Pew! One more shot. There you go. Good. I mean, I'm hitting. No, it's good. Those tests, those tests were good. <laughs> the helmet's pristine, though. <laughs> now that you have seen... <laughs> The results of that video, it's quite obvious. When it comes to sniping or some urban combat, scene complexity can't be set at 200,000. Sometimes you are more than likely going to have to set at normal, which is 500,000. Change the scene complexity in game as often as you wish, but the most optimal ones are at very low and very high. It all depends on the situation, the matter of combat. Now, let's say changing the settings and all and all these settings you, that we've been changing haven't improved your performance, and you're still looking for a way to improve it overall. Well, until the new render arrives, Daisy, which is probably in the future, the best the best suggestion I would personally give is be looking at a upgrade or an entirely new system because right now this is the, probably the best time to plan for a new system since. November is, is just a, just around the corner. And the Cyber Monday sale is the best time to buy the computer. I mean, personally, when, when I knew Daisy Standalone was coming out two years, about a year and a half or two years ago, I had a feeling Daisy Standalone was coming out. And 
I planned ahead and I built the system that I currently am on. Now I also plan to do some video editing, so I I made I got myself some RAM and all that. But here I'll show you the specs of this machine. DX Diac. The whole purpose of this machine was to get really high FPS and have enough RAM for video editing and all that. There is 16 gigs of RAM, and I use an i7 3000 i7-3770K CPU. It says here that it's 3.5 gigahertz, but it's changed. It's, a, it's actually at 4.3 gigahertz with a mild overclock. Overclocking can improve performance, but it comes with a risk that if you do not know how to overclock, it can significantly damage your CPU. While I was doing the test, I was only using one GPU on the GTX 690. If you're interested in seeing a tutorial regarding how to use both GPUs in the game, I can show I can show that. But there's just <laughs> there's some issues regarding when you're in the service service selection. So I'll cover that and at another time. But overall. That covers the entire tutorial, and I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, post it in the comments below, and I'll try to put my best to answer them. This tutorial was interesting, or finding the results was quite interesting, and if it could help anyone out there, then that's the whole point. And I'll see you guys later.